Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Adobe Live. Thank you all for joining us today. Hi, chat. See a lot of familiar faces and names. We have Jack, we have Jeff. Hello, Sam. Hey, James, I see you as the first comment. Uh, happy Monday. I'm your host, Alexis Bustos. Joining me is designer extraordinaire, Pablo Stanley. If you don't know that name, I'm sure you have seen his, at least seen a drawing or two floating around the web. Uh, Pablo, how are you doing this Monday afternoon slash morning? I'm doing very, very good. I am uh, super happy, super excited to just uh, like uh, join people and, uh, and just like draw and make doodles together. Love it. Yeah. yeah, that's like all I want ever is to just hang out with people and doodle. Um, <laughs> this is going to be an exciting stream. Pablo will be creating designs uh, in both Fresco and XD. So we have this awesome stream. We're going to be going, we're going to be seeing Fresco. XD streams don't normally see that. So I'm really stoked about it. Um, so before we get into Pablo's design, why don't we go over the schedule today and it will be the exact same as tomorrow. So I think it'll, it'll help us uh, see what we're doing. Uh, this morning we did some brand design with Alex, um, followed by some hand lettering with Rihanna Chan. Um, you're currently tuned into illustration design with Pablo and I. And following us will be Andrew and Jordan designing in the dark, spooky. And as always, uh, DA, uh, design the creative challenges where you can get started on bite-sized projects in XD and Photoshop and Illustrator and Premiere will all be ongoing throughout the next two weeks. Um, and so check out those streams as well. Those are kind of interspersed throughout the, uh, the streams today. I believe Peter will be holding the XD creative challenge right after us. And uh, it's all, those are awesome to do. And we'll be giving feedback tomorrow on the daily creative challenge for today. Um, just another, another really cool reminder, today we're doing something a little different. Today, towards the end of the stream, we'll be doing an art, artist spotlight. And it's a new segment on Adobe Live where we can celebrate the community and just really spotlight one of you guys. And anybody can be nominated. If you wanna nominate someone you know, someone in the chat, so maybe it's yourself, um, check it out. There's a tab right above the chat moderators will guide you there if you need help and uh, we'll come we'll come back to that um one last reminder if anyone's tuning in from youtube awesome what's up youtube love it love you guys um, but if you want to see these amazing projects like and see them and see them in depth come over to behance all of the the chat that i'm referring to actually happens on behance so speaking of chat i will keep an eye on it and we'll be talking Hello everyone. Yeah, hey Scott. Woo, Sam Anderson's in the chat. What's up? Uh, we'll be we'll be keeping an eye on that. And without further ado, Pablo, I think I think we're ready to learn all about you and what you'll be working on these next two days. Yes. So uh, so hi. <laughs> Thank you for for the intro, Alexis. Super excited about this. Uh, well, I am Pablo Pablo Stanley. I am a designer, illustrator, doodler, uh, someone that just. I don't know. Like, I, I think I'm, I'm just like a doodler that somehow like got into the design world, and and now I'm, I call myself myself a designer. Uh, but but yeah, to uh, actually like our project is going to be involving some doodles too. So I'm excited about that. It's going to be pretty much just like a simple landing page for uh for for a music product like an imaginary music product there we're gonna call it waves or we can change the name of that as imaginary right. but uh waves with a z because it's cool yes. <laughs> and uh yes of course and because the the other domains were not available maybe and that's why they got <laughs> a z uh so waves uh it's a music collaboration tool and we're going to be creating a landing page that receives a uh, new uh potential users customers and the idea is going to be like hey like tell them what waves is all about uh and and just like how it works but also uh like can we use illustrations here and there 
on the landing page, on the design of the landing page. That's going to be like part of the challenge too. Uh, and for that, we're going to be using like, like different tools, like a lot of different tools. We're going to be using Adobe XD. There's going to be more tomorrow uh, because today is going to be more on the wireframing part. So for that, we're going to be using Adobe Fresco, which I'm really excited because I'm, I'm still learning. So a lot of the things that I'm going to be using is, is also like kind of like I'm going through the learning process. Uh, so Fresco is like an iPad app that allows you to just draw on, on stuff. So that's going to be uh, part of it. And also we're going to use an Illustrator for just like uh, actually creating the, the, the illustrations. So we're going to be using some cool tricks that I'm pretty sure that a lot of you, even seasoned illustrators, I'm sure that it have something for you cool. So I'm, I'm excited about that. And then, yeah, put it all together on Adobe XD. Oh, and also Adobe Stock because we need some inspiration. So I was thinking that maybe we can do some searching there and just like uh, here, here and there to see like uh, what we got there for, for the illustrations that we're going to create. Love it. What an Adobe filled afternoon. Yes. I'm very Every excited to, to doodle with you. I'm, I mean, I'm going to be drawing right along with you, maybe practicing and seeing. Um, awesome. Fresco is a very new uh, Adobe tool. And um, for anybody who is, looking for a way to kind of enhance their drawing and sketching skills, try it out. It's on an iPad. Let's, I'm really excited to see it. I know a lot of designers are still like, we're still in our notebooks. Um, I think I'm ready to make the transition over to Fresco. Um, I'm really excited to see what you're, what you're gonna do with it today. Um, yeah. We have some comments. Cornell's asking, why, why aren't you sitting? And you know what, Cornell? Pablo can stand, he can sit, he can do cartwheels. He is agile. We like it. We like it. What? Why? Why are you sitting? You know, like stand up, everybody. <laughs> yeah. Um, awesome. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yeah, everyone, yeah. stand up. If you're in the chat, stand up. Be, go along yeah. with Pablo. Just stand. Yeah. It's uh, being a like I've, I've had a this uh, it's like one of those uh, fancy stand up desks, and I don't know. It I, I like it. it. It's supposed to be good for you too. You don't have you, you you shouldn't do it a lot though so right so right. yeah it's, oh, I, I stand don't know, up like desk it. sit down it's you know what like nothing in it, nothing too much everything in moderation i usually exactly. end up lowering that to those stand-up desks about halfway through the day yeah. um i am so excited to see your illustrations and um yeah i can't get I, i'm so stoked about this chat are you guys ready i think they're ready <laughs> they're a little they're a little quiet sometimes <laughs> a little bit quiet yeah so okay so i don't know like uh, how do we start we yeah let me jump right into adobe fresco which is going to be yeah so uh, before that should i share my screen just to to show like uh, the the stuff that oh, we're absolutely. going to be oh okay. absolutely yes yes any any process you want to share with us yeah. um yeah Okay, cool. So uh, I don't know if uh, my screen is being shared, but uh, I suppose it is. Uh, so yeah, so I, I, first of all, like what are we even doing today? And, I, and like I was telling you, I just created a document, just like a pointing out some of the stuff that we're going to be doing. So we're going to be creating a, a landing page, a music collaboration landing page. Uh, and I just like a, put the steps today, but like before you create any project, usually you want to create you start with a with a brief and a description of the project and well what what are you even doing right mm -hmm. so so i just like put together just like a quick document usually you might want to go over more detail about these things and you want to involve other people uh here it's just like as an exercise for ourselves but usually you like before you start anything i will always recommend just start a document just write it down i don't know like with text regular text and just like what are the things that you're trying to accomplish what are your goals like uh what is this thing and also just like start writing the actual copy so like for this landing page just like a, put together like hey what is the problem what is the why what what is even waves right for for all of those so like just to define it and and like how uh, are we wanting to approach this problem and also just I did put some steps just for us that maybe you don't actually put this on a brief and I just put it this for for this specific reason and then I put together like a copy of uh, like the the text that the actual landing page is going to have um, but usually you want to invite other people uh, to collaborate with this people 
potentially in marketing uh, and product and the growth theme. I don't know, like whoever needs to take a look at this text, like invite them to just like a, a like just like what are, what are we trying to accomplish? And usually these points, uh, this is something that I do is just like, okay, the hero section of the landing page, what is it going to have? And, and like here is just like a heading, you know, it's just a heading and text. And then my my call to action, like sun eye for free. So, and then hey, after that, there's another section. So the section is going to be like a, a feature section. So like, a hey, here's the copy and everything. And, and here I'm using a specific tool, but just use whatever tool you use for writing and then invite other people. So that's, that's pretty much it. Like, like how uh, we go about, like I usually go about this and more when you're trying to collaborate with other people so they understand what the problem is. So again, landing page for ways that informs people about the benefits of the product and gets them to sign up, I guess, right, <laughs> right. to try it. That's the, uh, the ultimate goal. Uh, I love and I love it. That's so important to keep focused on what you're building and why. You know? Yeah. And I, I love that it's, I love that you start with words first. Um, do you normally, um, do you normally always start with your copy kind of written out before you even get into your designs like this? Uh, it, it's just like, uh, it's one of those things that I try to, mm. I try to do it that way because, uh, like if, if I start with the design right away and, and, and I am. I'm so eager to just start doodling. I'm so eager to just start putting bit, pixels together, but I have to train myself usually to like, no, stop, stop. Like first define the problem. First, like, what are you even doing? It's like, nah. And, and sometimes it's, 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 you think that it's really clear in your head, you know? Mm -hmm. You feel like you're ready to start like putting it together. But I would always recommend to just like do even just a draft of like written copy. Just like the most basic stuff, because editing this, it's so easy and inviting other people to collaborate. It's so easy too. So it's, it's better to do it at that level first, uh, before you start like putting together something and let, then later you put something that looks beautiful maybe, but it's not really solving the problem or maybe it's, it's right. not something that the other people were anticipating. So, so then it's going to be harder for you to edit it because like, oh, but I already put so much time into right. it. Yeah. I, it already looks beautiful. Look at it. Yeah, but it doesn't work. It doesn't solve the problem. So, and and if you, if you had just taken some time to do that first part, you would have avoided yourself all those problems. So, so yeah, like uh, I always try to do that myself because of all the times that I <laughs> would because I've learned, I yes. learned the hard way. Yes. I learned the hard way where I will go and just like start the study stuff and then present it as like people. That's another thing. Like people usually like, they feel like, oh, okay, this looks already finished. You didn't, right. inclu you didn't include us. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask us. You didn't, you, you just, what, what are we supposed to do now? You know, and you don't mm -hmm. want to, to put people in that uncomfortable position too. Then they feel left out and they feel like also like, eh, whatever pablo pablo just wants to to go and do stuff and it's not working anyway you know like right. no you want to include them and then you're gonna you're, you're probably just go, always going to be better if you collaborate so 100 percent i agree 100 yeah. percent. it makes complete sense chat remember anyone watching just remember always write down always try to figure out why you're what you're doing i have some some colleagues we like to say what are we even doing right what are we even doing here <laughs> Not, yeah. not, literally, not, not literally, but like, you know, you know, what are we doing? Um, and it's always great to have something like this to come back to because you get so fast into the design process. You can just, you jump in there really quick, quickly and it's hard. It's hard to keep focus on it. So I love this. I love your, you're showing us your, your, it's like the wireframe for the wireframe for the wireframe. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's the, the lowest level of definition. Exactly. And, and so like, and, and after that, yeah, just like a, take small steps towards like that final, when you start coding it, when you start like a, putting it, like giving it to, like handing it off to, to the people who are going to put it to, together and, and code. That's, uh, but yeah, so small steps. Don't, don't, don't try to jump too quickly. Be patient. At least that's what I tell myself. <laughs> Be patient. Yeah, we, were, we were getting 10 and I think it's perfect because a lot of us designers are kind of we're all over the place but you know what we're gonna do we're starting zen today yes zen. Oh, yes, yes. Love it, love it. Oh, my, my sinuses 
<laughs> okay, very sad. So, so okay, so I think step one, we already did the copy over here. We have the copy of this thing. All the sections are defined. Look at me. I was, I was being proficient and I already wrote this because I think it was going to be a little bit boring if, I, if we were just writing this. So we have all the sections already defined. Now let's jump to the, the step two where we start sketching the wireframes. Like again, another level of definition below before you actually wireframe on on like on XD, mm -hmm. I would say like, hey, go and 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 wireframe stuff, sketch it like, like with your head, if, like pen and paper. But mm -hmm. now you you can actually do this on Fresco too. But I would I would usually recommend before Fresco, I would tell people, go and do it by hand on a piece of paper and pencil. But now with Fresco, I can tell people like, no, no, do it there. And then if you make a mistake, you can undo it really easily because you can do a lot of gestures there. So that's our first step. Let's, uh, should we jump to Fresco? Should we just like uh, go ahead and do that? Absolutely, yeah. Let's okay, cool. Let me do a new sharing of the screen. I'm going to select iPhone via cable. And I think, uh, oh, let me turn it on. I need to turn it on. Nice. Can you see it now? Nice. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. So, so first of all, let's let's take a look at what we have here. This is Fresco. Oh, sorry. Like, can you hear me better? I, mm -hmm. I would, I'd move my my microphone. So this is Fresco, and then over here I have uh, recent projects, and then also just like uh, some templates for you to get get started over here and start a new document. So, and also it has a lot of tutorials too for like for a lot of people. I'm sure that there's a uh, this is like a, a new thing. So these tutorials are pretty, pretty cool. So one of the advantages that I like about Fresco is that it has the, the capability of uh, doing like very natural uh, uh, looking uh, uh, images with mm -hmm. like textures and like it's pixel based, you know, like uh, like Photoshop. So you can add textures, you can add uh, uh, like make your drawings really organic. Uh, oh yeah, look at this store. Look at this store. It's, it's telling you about a lot of things. So so it has, a, if you are familiar with Photoshop, then Fresco is going to feel really close to home because it's, it has a lot of functionality like selecting and stuff like that that is really close to Photoshop. But the other thing that I love is that it also does vector that mm -hmm. actually you can do like vector illustrations. So uh, like for example here, uh, if let's go to a new project. And, and the project that I had I already wrote the, the sections that we're, we're going to create today. Uh, but you have two different brushes. The one that is here on the top, this one, this is a pixel brush. And this one is cool for sketching or like it, it has really cool like brushes for like, look at that. That's look at awesome. how cool is that? And then it's uh, pressure sensitive. So if you have an iPad pencil, like you can do like really cool stuff. Uh, with your brushes and just like even also all of these uh, uh, the, 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 the templates, uh, the pre the starters uh, brushes that you give like are pretty cool. So and it has like different uh, different categories. So if you want to start painting and stuff, like it's pretty yeah. cool. So it has that. It has like the pixel brushes, you know, like lettering marker, all of those mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. But it also has, you will go over here and now you have uh, light brushes too, uh, which uh, also are like pixel based, but it creates like really cool stuff. Uh, right now, I, my color is just black. So <laughs> like it's, it's not giving you a lot of... Uh, a range of, of the stuff that you can do uh, but you can like what I'm trying to say is that really this thing just like I don't know if you can see but like it feels like it's mm -hmm. like real mm -hmm. paint look at that yeah what the Fresco team is just just crushing it with these brushes yeah this is this like like imagine like an <laughs> yeah this looks so real because of the texture how you how you, you you start painting it follows your brush and it just like adds yes. that like depth like look at that it looks like real paint <laughs> oh my i love God. it it's it's uh i don't know like so as a as a as an illustrator would you call you call yourself a doodler would you call yourself an illustrator as well with this with just in general i guess while you're doodling yeah it, it's just like it, and then you start adding more and it feels like it's 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 like stacking the the paint is just mm -hmm, a stack and mm -hmm, it's getting chunky mm -hmm. 
Look at that. So, so cool. So hold on. So now, well, now I need to add some something to it. Let me uh, just change the color. And oops, sorry. Oh my god. Well, apparently I'm not very good with this. There you go. Now I have a happy face. <laughs> so uh, anyway, what I'm, what I'm trying to show is the the range of the the capacity that this gives you. Like, it really really allows you to create really cool stuff. Like, obviously. You, the artists that are out there, I'm sure that you will create much better things than I'm, what I'm doing right now. Uh, this was just as a demo uh, thing. But the other thing that I think makes Fresco really special, uh, it's that, uh, let me hide this. Uh, it's that it has vector uh, brushes. Mm -hmm. So over here, th the third one in the menu, these are vector brushes. So if you are designing for the web, you're just like an illustrator, you want to not, uh, maybe uh, the cool thing about pixel brushes is that it gives you all that, uh, all those pixels and, and allows you to give uh, like add texture and volume and all that light. But if you, but it's pixel based. So it's resolution dependent. If, if, if mm -hmm. you want to make it bigger, then it's not, well, it's not going to scale because you you made it a certain size, right? So with uh, vector ones, then you can make it, you can expand this as much as you want. It doesn't matter. It will mm -hmm. never lose its resolution because it's all vector. Look at that. Yeah. So I, so it's it's like using Illustrator here. So I like uh, for those who want to create like images for, uh, I don't know, like SVG images for. Mm -hmm uh for the web like mm -hmm. they could totally use uh fresco i'm just like doodling but i'm not really drawing anything let's actually draw something so this is like a, the cool thing is that it also maintains uh a really uh natural uh flow depending on how mm -hmm. you 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 want to change it uh and and like the, the 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 brushes that it has this one is a basic taper but you can uh a basic flat for example this one mm -hmm. is a more like a flat brush and mm -hmm. all of this again like it's all vector so you can mm -hmm. come back and export it and use it on illustrator and edit it even more if you want to so uh so yeah that is uh one of the coolest things that i that i love about uh this one actually basic wrap is pretty cool because uh, it's pretty it's just, awesome so. yeah uh, some people are asking you're you're definitely using an apple pencil i'm sure you other you know you can also use other styluses do you recommend the apple pencil when you're drawing or do you have any other any tools that you would you recommend using with uh, Fresco? Uh, well, I'm using, yeah, I'm using an iPad. So I would, yeah, I would recommend using, uh, totally using the, the, the Apple Pencil uh, with, with an iPad mm -hmm. because it just, it just works. It works great, to be honest. That uh, I haven't, I haven't tried others though. So I don't know if there are other uh, pencils out there that might uh, offer better, I don't know, better response or something, but, uh, but this one has been great be honest like uh it, the pressure the sensitivity on the on, on the pressure and stuff it's is it's perfect on my brushes so like for example here like yeah. really thin and then i start pushing a little bit more a little bit more a little bit more and look at that this is this was all made with the same brush and it was just like responding to my uh to to, to the pressure that i'm applying into the ipad so i would always recommend this one and and yeah so I, I can go all day doodling here, doing demoing uh, this thing, but maybe we have an agenda. So maybe we should <laughs> jump into what are, we're trying to do, but let me uh, finish this little guy. Uh, and maybe this guy has like a big face like this, like a, and then just a little bit of hair over here. Perfect. Big face, <laughs> little hair. Yeah. Love it. Usually Love when it, you're doing it. cartoons, you want to exaggerate just like a, expressions and, and things and now to make the the face look even bigger well you make a small body right oh my goodness i love it <laughs> and small feet and the same uh, guy. Pablo, you, you were go. talking at the at the front around uh how you again like you're a doodler and but then somehow you became a designer into it do you think designers i think do you think doodling is a key skill to being a good designer uh no i i don't oh. think it is i think it, it it like oh how do i hmm 
you know, I'm still learning too. So I want to know how do I delete selected stuff? Oh, erase. There you go. Over here on the bottom. Do you see that? Amazing. So yep. I have it mm -hmm. selected. And then here on the bottom, there's this menu. And then here I can erase. I've forgotten about that. Uh, I don't, th I think it's, it's just like a, a dueling is a skill that might help you, but it's not, I don't think it's necessary. No. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think uh, it might help you, but like, if you don't doodle, like that's okay. I think, uh, uh, how do I deselect? Hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we all have different Deselects skills. Down so at the could... bottom. I think it's down at the bottom with the, with the little menu. Oh, deselect. There you go. There Thank you. you. Go. Um, so sometimes like different people have different skills. So I would say like, Hey, try to bring, uh, the different skills that you have. Uh, like it, I, I seen a lot of people moving into, I'm going to speak about what I know and from mm -hmm. what I know, mm -hmm. it's some product design. So I see a lot of people doing, uh, moving from to product design who are, uh, psychologists who, who are a lot of people who, who are on, uh, architecture. Uh, a lot of people who are on research and these people like actually have different skills that bring into product design that all of them, maybe they're not really doodlers, but they can come into product and really talk about uh, behavior and, and maybe also talk about like a, like, a, like how information is being uh, placed, like how an experience is, is, is felt and how, uh, well, how to tell a story, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I would say like, hey, no, doodling is not a necessary skill, but if you have it, use it. Mm -hmm. And But if doodling is not your thing, then maybe there's another skill that you can use in product design. At least, I'm, I'm talking mm -hmm. about UX product design interaction, which I think it's uh, one of those, uh, 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 I don't know, like a path that you can take that is going to accept a lot of, like, I don't know. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, totally, totally see what you're saying. Yeah, it's 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 just one other skill that may help. And just like I think the way that you use it, it's a lot of storytelling um, with doodles. And so, you know, sometimes it's hard to get a lot of buy-in from other people. People respond very well to drawings. Um, and doodling is very much, it's not, you know, it's not painting, it's doodling. I think a lot of people are scared of sketching um, right off the bat, especially people who work mainly in uh, computers and who maybe have, have or have come into UX through not an art form, more of a uh, designer, computer-based type of work workflow. So uh, I think this is a great way to show how like doodling can just, this is a great way to start doodling. Yeah. You don't even have to touch a pen or pencil if that freaks you out. You can just have a stylus and uh, stay in your computers. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. I think uh, mm -hmm. uh, doodling will be a... Uh, uh, a great way to communicate, uh, but like try to use all the different skills in your arsenal, mm -hmm. uh, all the different uh, tools that you have there. So, so okay, let's start sketching. Sketching wireframing sketching. Is that what you call it? Sketching, sketching wireframing. Wireframe. Sketching. So let's just start with uh, a hero. So the hero section, let me go back to what it's supposed to say. And the hero section is welcoming people into the product. Let me just go back and it says, let the music play. So I was thinking that we can just like do the hero in different ways. So mm -hmm. we can have, oops, sorry. Uh, we can have an image on the right, you know, like a big image. Mm -hmm. And then maybe the message is on the left. So maybe what is the, the main copy, the main, like the, uh, the, the headline. Is, it looks like this and maybe some supportive uh, like a, a, a copy too. And then we have our bottom here. Just like one big button that is telling people, hey, get started quickly. And then over here, maybe we have a menu. We have our navigation on the top. So that's like a basic hero you can do. Big image. like And, and this image is actually like a full full size, you know? Like a full height, the, the height of the, of the viewport. Another one we could do, maybe, is also using an image, but the image is more like constrained. So like we have the image that is more like over here, this is a musician app, like a collaboration app. So maybe we show that with uh, some characters here, 
maybe playing the guitar or something,、mm -hmm. you know, and and maybe we have another person that is just like playing the keyboards or something like this. Look at my doodles. <laughs> yeah, it's. Can, are, are you under? Like, I, I feel、it's, like. Oh yeah, look at that. It, it is my my doodle. Obviously, everyone understands what I'm drawing, and it's like no problem. What is that? <laughs> what the hell、like、are you drawing? It's hilarious.、Yeah. Um, but we have a comment saying, "Standing and sketching is a skill within its own." Oh, you're, art, you're getting just like feed. You're just getting kudos left and right for the standing thing. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. Like, uh, it's uh. I'm. I am standing, but I'm also. I'm leaning on my on the desk, so the desk is helping a little bit. Yeah. So、Sketching、I was thinking. <laughs> so maybe the image is just like the using the illustrations because one of the requirements we didn't read that, but one of the requirements was like, hey, use illustration in your design. So maybe they we have a, a couple of like floating people. Maybe maybe there's another person down here.、Uh, I don't know. Maybe there's another person that is like playing. Playing the drums, or maybe it's just like at least, uh, uh, maybe it's not the drums, but it's more like a percussion. What about like this?、Mm -hmm, you know,、mm -hmm. so <laughs> sort of、uh, maybe like a little like a bongo or something. Yeah, like the bongos, and maybe the leg is over here. So we have a composition. Let's uh, let's try to fix our composition a little bit better. I'm going to just select this little guy. And again, we're just sketching here, but、uh, just like there you go. I think、Look、this is going to be a little bit better. So let's、uh, let's do keep creating or、uh, select this and let's move this. There you go. Now it looks、uh, like a better composition, right? So I'm using the select tool because just like it's in Photoshop, you can just select a, a part of the design and just move stuff around. I don't know if you saw that, but I'm using this、uh, the lasso tool. But you can、mm -hmm. just use also a rectangle. Let's actually use the rectangle. I'm going to draw a rectangle, and now I, I'm going to use the move tool to just move my little sketch over here. There you go. So easy. There you go. So now I don't need the selection anymore. So I'm going to go here on the bottom. The, the select menu. So there you go, like something like that. And just as before, instead of being an image that is like full blonde, like、uh -huh. here,、uh, that this one is like going like a, a full width. This one is a little bit more contained. Let me deselect. And and again, here a copy. Oops. By the way, I don't know if you're noticing this. Maybe you're you're asking yourself like, how is Pablo undoing so quickly?、Uh -huh. What is What magic is he using? Well,、uh, one of the cool things about、uh, Fresco is that you can use、uh, gestures too. So, with a double tap, like、oh, sorry, not a double tap, a tap with two fingers, you can undo. So, let's say that I draw something and then tap with two fingers, boom, undoes the last thing. It looks like I also did that. So, undo, 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 <laughs> until <laughs> you get back to that point where you don't want to undo anymore. So there you go. Look at Look that. that. That's looking cool. They're hanging out. They're hanging out. Yeah. Michelle says they're jamming. They're absolutely jamming. They're jamming. They're jamming. I don't know if we have、uh, licensing for that song, so I'm going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love. I love it. It almost feels like these new gestures and using iPad is. It's one of those things where it's like, it, at what point are we just truly just wizards? At what point is technology going to make us feel like a wizard? And that's、yeah. what those those、uh, deletes feel like to me. Sometimes I wonder, like, imagine if Picasso had had this, or like Michelangelo had had、mm. an iPad with fresco. What would they have done? Would would they have been just like I don't know? Like, imagine all the cool stuff. And I'm sure that right now we have or modern times, Picassos who are doing amazing stuff with this. You know, absolutely. So, So I'm going to draw another one, and this one is going to be two people. So again, I was thinking that maybe there's another one with uh, uh, two people here,、mm -hmm. and maybe this one has a guitar, or maybe it's a bass or something. Wow, my drawings are horrible. Well, you have to use your imagination. A little bit. It's a wireframe. It's a sketch. It's yeah. The same thing. I think everyone asks themselves. Exactly. While they're sketching, especially designers, like, what did I just 
bra. <laughs> yeah, and, and and that's the idea, right? It's like, hey, give yourself uh, 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 the ability to make mistakes and just like don't don't take it, don't try to make it perfect. You're just mm -hmm. sketching. It's okay. So I was thinking that maybe we can do one layout where uh, the, the the image is on the top, copy, copy, and then it's all center. You know, so that way mm -hmm. it's it's just like center here instead of like having a two column layout over mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we, one of these, we're gonna have to choose one of these tomorrow. Uh, but for now, I think for sketching, this is looking good. So, okay, so that's our hero section. Should we go to feature? Let's do it. Yeah, so Let's on the feature, uh, we have, a, it's just like one feature. So it's a section that has just one feature. And the feature is, choose the perfect beat. So I was thinking that this one is actually pretty similar to like how the layout of these could be. So I was thinking that uh, let's uh, draw a rectangle, like a web. And I was thinking that maybe we show some of the UI of the product. And then maybe we add an illustration or someone like this. And then maybe another person over here, because the idea is that all about waves about this imaginary app is that it's collaborative you know so maybe we have uh, something it's something about the ui here this is just part of the product of waves so the idea is, is that a we have what the feature is about some text and then just a little cta asking people learn more mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and maybe we have a uh, i don't know i was thinking that maybe we we have some shapes like cool, like, I don't know, like cool shapes that are adds to the doodles. Just like subtle, like mm -hmm. uh, 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 texture here and there. So that's one wireframe for a feature. Let's, uh, let's do another one. What do you suggest? Do you have a suggestion on what we could we yeah. could experiment with? You know, I was just thinking about how friendly these, uh, how friendly these little guys are next to the, next to just how friendly they're gonna be to this, to this app's land or to this landing page in general and uh, what illustrations really do. I think, um, let's see, this one's feel the beat. Hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, no, choose the perfect beat. Choose the perfect beat. Okay. Okay. So It'd be fun maybe... to have some cool interaction around, you know, seeing maybe, maybe there's some different hover states around like selecting a beat or maybe um, something, some subtle subliminal choosing. Um, or maybe even like a graphic around a beat. Or what does a beat look like? Um, yeah. Okay. Maybe something literal, literal, but not literal. I don't know. Um, this is the the feature section. So you already guess how already have some buy in by this person. Now they're like, how cool can this thing really be? Right. Yeah, I like that. Maybe maybe we have a grid like this, mm -hmm. and then it has like a play button. Mm. You know, and maybe. Like you can choose any of these beats and maybe, maybe the, the, hold on. Maybe it is more like this. This, this one is playing. Ah. So you have to press it and then you can like press on this one and then this one will stop playing. And that way you're choosing a beat, you know, maybe the CTA is, that. there's a CTA here, or maybe it's just the name of the beat that will take you to the page where you can actually try it and see more about it. But this is like a choose perfect beat, you know, just a little bit and then learn more again. Maybe that's okay. one. That that's way cool. you get to interact, right? Yeah. You get to try yeah. it as you were saying. And let's do another one. I was thinking, what, what if- What if a little, what if each little um, illustration was like a different example of like a different style of music? Maybe oh there's a God. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So maybe, uh, yeah. So maybe we have like a dude that is like a little bit like a maybe it's a it's a pawn rocker or something. Oh yeah, death. So then uh, we have a play again. Oh, and then that's cool. Maybe we have another person who I don't know. I don't want to do stereotypes, but let's uh, say that mm -hmm. this person has, what if they have long hair 
can. The pita is maybe going to be, I don't know. Maybe it's maybe, electronic or something. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're already doodling. Look at this. And let's do another one. Uh, oops, sorry. Anyway, we're going to have to make uh -huh, the illustrations uh -huh. for this later. But the idea is like a, a character is a... Uh, the characters are representing different different types of music, right? Yeah, and you can try cool. them out. You can try them that's out. Fun. There you go. That's and fun. then choose the perfect beat. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know what? No. Mm -mm. No. Hold on. Maybe. Just so it's so it maybe this should be around here mm -hmm. and oops sorry deselect let's go back here and then the copy is on top choose the perfect beat you know mm -hmm. and then there's another call to action here there you awesome. go so the title is on top and then you actually get to choose it and then if you want to learn more then you can click on this so look fun. how creative like so we started fun. with something super basic right and uh -huh. then we're like no 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 no, no. <laughs> let's get let's get them to actually try it so yes. I, and uh, it's a nice merging of them both at the bottom yeah love it if anyone I, you know I'm, if anyone is just joining us i realize we've been dueling for a little bit now if you're just joining us we're here with pablo stanley and we're creating pablo's cre designing a music sharing product be using right now we're just wireframing in Fresco. And later on, we'll take it, we'll take the next step. But right now, we're just wireframing. So anyone who's just joining us, welcome to the wireframe doodle feature of yeah. the stream. It's one of my, it's probably gonna be one of my favorite wireframing sessions ever. Um, just because look at all these little guys and guys and gals on the on the screen already. It's yeah, great. I know. Look at these uh, people. Look at them. They're just like making music, you know? <laughs> Love it. There you go. Pablo, do you play any instruments? Are you a, are you a musician as well at all? I uh, I try. I try. It's a uh, it's one of those things that uh, I learned at a young age that uh, music. My fingers. My fingers. Mm -hmm. And the instrument do not. Do not play well. They're not friends. <laughs> They're, they do not like each other. My hand. It, I think it's. No, you know what? I think it's it's just me that I'm lazy and I don't practice. Mm, no practice. So I want to. I want to grab this thing. And I want that whatever is on my head. On Pablo's head. This is my head. Yeah, sure. mm -hmm. Here, that like, hey, I'm telling hand, make music with this. But the hand is like, no, but we never practice, yo. And the guitar is like, yeah, I'm just going to give you noise. And so I get mad. So mm -hmm. that's how it works. <laughs> that's how it works. How does that work? So, what I've actually done is like, what I learned is like, well, you can still go ahead and try to do the stuff that is here in my head, but actually do it with people who have talent. Mm -hmm. So then you find other people who are really talented, really good. And then you tell them about the idea that you have in your head. And sometimes they will say like, hey, you know what? We can totally do that, you know? That sometimes happens. So that works. just yeah. make a band, be the lead. Yep. <laughs> and then have no talent, but have people who do have the talent. That's my perfect. my key to success. <laughs> okay. I think that's a perfect explanation on how to how to find success. Yeah, just like a go find and everyone find... who's really good at things and be like, you know what? I think yeah. this would sound really good if we uh, did it this way. Yeah, and then yeah. they do it, and then you take credit for it. Yeah. All you really See? need to know is three chords on a guitar anyways, so you're good. Yeah. 
actually it. well now that we're on it mm -hmm. i'm going to talk about it because when i was a kid i actually was well actually my nose was like this and i didn't have a beard but this was me as a kid and yeah i did play in a in a punk rock band and like what you're mentioning that was exactly like me like playing one of the cool things about playing punk rock is that if it sounds if it sounds bad it's okay it sounds good yeah if it's it, bad it, it's it, probably better actually it's part of the it's part of the thing mm -hmm. so uh so playing punk rock i only needed to know like uh like three chords too because like everything is it, it, it was just like this and then <laughs> sometimes i will be just like picking nice and and yeah but i did like the drummer is very important so whoever is on the back playing the drums they actually have to play well they have to play good the drummer cannot mess it up so your drummer oh, yeah. is very important mm -hmm. this person who also had a mohawk the beat keeper they're the timekeepers they're yeah. especially in punk rock and you guys are going like what three times as fast as normal exactly <laughs> as, as normal yeah. rock or whatever that's requirement if you're making i mean any band mm -hmm. your beat needs to be require oh my god my, my english is not that well require oh my god well, you kind of like, I think it's a punk rock version of say, writing out requirement. And I kind of think it works. <laughs> that is, exactly. That's what it is. Uh, but, but yeah, this person is really important. The name of my band was called the Dead Stanleys. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. So anyway, we got a little bit of, uh, of course, but uh, sure. Sure. I think, uh, uh, I think one they of could the make their way onto the, who knows, they could be a little doodle on the on this uh on this landing page yeah so one of the things that i learn a lot about okay so hold on before i start talking benefits three features we have three features uh that we want to uh, uh to uh, tell people about this product so let's how can we put this in different what layout can we use i think the basic layout could be just like a and then just like this mm -hmm. right really simple maybe some mm -hmm. an, an iconic thing and then just telling you what this is about and then just like some explanation benefits three features and then maybe another one could be another layout that we could try once we get to xd is doing something similar to this and then maybe what do you think if it is also like that where it's like it has an icon icon feature feature mm -hmm. icon feature feature mm -hmm. and then here this is kind of like a hover state mm. you know so maybe uh when you hover or maybe when you click on one of these then this changes where the image represents whatever you you selected here. So uh, whatever benefits. So this image is responding to whatever you have selected on the left. That could be one way. That's a cool way. Mm -hmm. What is a, what, what idea? Come on, we can come up with something what's another, else. What's another way to show three features besides the one, two, three? A one, two, three, a one, and two, a one, a one two, three. A la uno, a la There's some music, any music references through that. Um, right, so what if we, you know, there's could be, you could do some sort of like Brady Bunch type of look, at, look and feel, like maybe three features kind of incorporate, maybe there's, maybe the actual page itself has is actually set up so it's like there's three different spaces, maybe there's three different vibes going on, kind of looks like what you did with the, with the second one um let's see you know what let's do it six features <laughs> perfect no um but i like i love your uh brady bunch reference because it could you know just like a let's do it a drum machine like a beat machine oh that's that's cool that's cool 
you know so uh one of these things i don't know we're still we're brainstorming here okay so it's okay mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. there's no bad ideas there's no bad ideas so maybe we put it like this as you were saying like the brady bunch but it's a but it's an an, an, an actual drum machine and maybe the display is uh it's actually telling you what it is that's pretty cool you know and then uh whatever is playing it just like it it shows shows up let me uh change the size of this by the way you can change the size of your brush click on this and then it gives you a preview of, of it make it bigger or smaller pretty 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 cool just like that it's telling you that that one is selected mm -hmm. and over here it's just like like that uh yeah i like I like something like this because it just like it brings back the idea that hey, this is about music, you know. I like this idea. And and maybe it is actual, like you were saying, like Brady Bunch, and it's like maybe the buttons have like people here, like characters or something. Oh, nice. Okay. <laughs> That was a good. I, I think one of these we we're, we gotta try those. So okay, let's do uh, the last part of our landing page. Let's do another one, and this is a CTA. So call to action mm -hmm. for those who look at CTA and say like, "What does that mean?" This is what it means: call to action, and the call to action is just like usually at the end of a page or in the beginning of a page or somewhere in between it's just like asking people what the intention of the page is right was like a, i think the goal of this page was to get people to try it out as soon as possible but sometimes it will be sign up uh it will be uh, uh try it will be mm -hmm. buy those kinds of things where it's mm -hmm. usually an action you know it, it's a verb so it's a verb it's an action and and you want to be very specific about what it is, you know. So that's uh, that's is your opportunity to tell people like, hey, I told you everything about uh, what we just discussed. Now, are you interested? Do you want to take the next step, yep. right? That's a call mm -hmm. to action. So okay, call to action. First, just a simple one. Usually, I think that sometimes like simple, just like a. Hey, Reminding you what is cool about waves, maybe another line, and just a big button. Just a big button, center. And maybe we have the the little dudes down here. <laughs> you know? It's really, really amazing what a drawing or a little doodle somewhere will do to a very simple landing page or anything. You know, yeah. that button, we've all seen that button. But you know what? Throw a doodle in. We'll see what it does. Changes it a lot. Yeah, it is. Uh, and and also when you're using a tool like this, it allows mm -hmm. you to just like do crazy things because it's it's okay. You're just doodling. You you're you can undo and 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 it doesn't feel like you are uh, like uh, you, you can make mistakes. You allow yourself to do that. So like and you can also just try crazy things. So uh, I would always invite you to. To take these steps first before you start like putting things together and creating your design system and all that stuff that is really important. Mm -hmm. But maybe at this stage, it's, it's important to also just like try different things. That I, the Brady Bunch idea mm -hmm. would have not thought about that if if I had just jumped straight into the design. Right here, it's just like, hey, what if we just try that? Oh, okay, it's gonna take us like what one minute to to try it out and see it how it will maybe look. And now it's in. Now we can uh, decide if we want to move on to with that idea or not. So I love it. I love how easy it is to select. Um, so I've been watching you just select and move things around. It's so instantaneous. It's it is almost better than drawing with a pen and paper because you can really just like throw away ideas, keep new things. Maybe you spent forever doodling that guy in his hair and you want to let go of that. And I can't tell you how many stacks of paper I've gone through. And like it's just waste. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> but it, it just mean, i like i like the fact that you're you're able to move things so quickly in in fresco i mean that's uh, there's a lot there's been a lot of, of applications similar but 
I love how how it's looking on on Fresco and how it's working so smoothly. Yeah, and one of the great things about using like a tablet like this uh, to draw and a sketch like this is that, uh, like you're saying, like a hey, moving things around and just like a perfecting. Also, like undoing. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, you don't know. Like whenever I go back and try to sketch something on like on paper, mm -hmm. I c I always catch myself like actually tapping with two fingers on the paper oh, on wow. real paper <laughs> trying oh, wow. to undo that... <laughs> like, a, like a physical pencil doing like drawing something on paper like i try to undo sometimes i try to pinch in or zoom oh it's like, my oh, gosh no. have you ever it's tried like... zooming in in real like with your eyes i'm like i can't really see that sign <laughs> have you ever caught yourself just doing it in real life <laughs> you want to like zoom in yeah <laughs> that's <laughs> I, I I catch myself like doing that too. So yeah, it, it allows you to also like you're saying like, hey, look at this. I get to zoom in, draw the details, and then zoom out and see the rest of the stuff. Just like yeah, hey, I want to focus so on this. Yeah. Which is important. It's again, it's like this step above your. Uh, we were in we were in your notion notion document just at the big start. You know, this is just another example of a uh, wireframe, an idea of like maybe making sure you can zoom out. Like get yourself a tool that allow you to zoom out. And maybe that's maybe that's the key there with tools. It's which one's gonna get you drawing and moving things around quickly, and then able to pull away from big pictures. I think that's why we like post its as designers, right? Exactly. They're little. You can walk away from them. You can detail onto them. Um, it was pretty great. Um, how many doodles do you ever do you ever? Uh, how do you how do you feel about seeing doodles that you've produced on other people's? Um, work in terms of not necessarily like you have so we we'll discuss maybe later all the doodles but there's a lot of doodles that people have used that are very that are doodles are a trend now and uh how do you feel about can you over doodle something can you over doodle something yeah i think uh everything you need to like do it uh with moderation, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to overdo it. And it's like, oh, like you want to combine different things. I think Doodles is one of the tools that you can use. Don't try to to overuse one of your tools that including Doodles too. So mm -hmm. uh, if Doodles is part of uh, the message that is up, um, that, that is on your brand and stuff, like use it here and there, like uh, where it makes sense, where at the end of the day, it's, is this helping the story being told, like, uh, is this helping the story? Yeah. Is this going to help uh, deliver the message in a better way? If the answer is like, no, then maybe you don't need it, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so sometimes it's like, hey, does it help deliver the message? Does it help make it look more like it's on brand? Well, uh, then if, if the answer is yes to one of those questions, then yeah, consider uh, doing the doodle. But if, if not, then maybe not. Maybe mm -hmm. you don't need a doodle there. Look at this. So I was thinking about like, that. I love this guy's look at the little nose peeking out over. Yeah. And and we have the call to action here. Like the message is here. Maybe it's just a big, big section with that uh that is holding like a box. And that box has a, a copy and the CTA inside it. Mm, kind of looks like he has a little mustache. Yeah, I was thinking that. Oh, it looks like a mustache. But it's not, <laughs> I suppose once it's text, it's not gonna look like a mustache. Of course, of course. Uh, but but yeah, let's uh, let's try to see what would it look like. What is the CTA? Let's say collab, collab your next piece. So collab on your next piece. There you go. I think uh, that's going to help. That's great. And and there Looking you go. Out. We wireframe. But at the same time, we allowed ourselves to just like a play around with doodles and see the possibilities of how we can uh, do different compositions for different sections. So we started with the hero. We did a uh, we did quite a lot of stuff. Look at that. Uh -huh. A lot of things to for us to explore and see what are what are the best things, what are what are the things that we actually want to build, you know. But if you if we had jumped straight to to uh, uh, push in the pixels, like to actually like designing something, maybe we would have chosen one and that's it, you mm -hmm, know, mm -hmm. and then move on to the next one because like we already spent half an hour or maybe one hour just designing one single one. And and this way we tried a lot of different things and that way we, we allow ourselves to later uh, try different things, like actually choose what to implement. 
Okay, cool. So there you go. We did hero section, three options. One with the image that is like a full uh, full height, uh, viewport height. Then another one where it's like, hey, we create a composition with the images. Maybe we do something where the images move on hover or something. Then another one where it's just like it's center. So it's uh, 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 this uh, the image is on the top and then copy copy and then the cta but it's all centered mm -hmm. pretty cool because this scales really well to uh mobile mm -hmm. like it's you're going, just going to be using the same layout on your mobile too so because on this one you're gonna have to figure out like okay how does this work on, on responsive you know like does the image go okay. on top and then the text below or is it text and then the image on top on, mm -hmm. on the bottom you have to figure that out st uh, that stuff so over yeah. here, it just scales really well because it's just the same. You were going to say something, Alexis? Well, this is the this is the part of the uh, the wireframing where we start, which is which is great that we have so many options. We get to pick and play how these interactions are going to go. So right now, you're you're kind of taking us through what are all the considerations of different screen sizes, responsiveness, and now and because we haven't you know started wireframing that completely, we can we have the freedom to move things around. Um, and I just wanted, yeah, I think uh, this is an important thing to call out. Um, besides screen size, responsiveness, interaction moments, uh, what else are you kind of looking at with them um, when you go through your sketches like this? Sometimes it's, uh, you have to be realistic on what you can actually do, you know? Mm -hmm. Like A, on the sketches, you, you allow yourself to go a little bit crazy on your ideas, mm -hmm. but like maybe your time is limited Maybe your resources are limited and also just like your abilities mm -hmm. have some limitations. So then you have to choose also based on that, right? Like, uh, hey, how much time, like maybe, for example, this one is a great idea, but maybe I don't actually have the, the capability to actually do this, you know? Mm -hmm. So, uh, hold on, how do I, oh yeah, I just wanted to hide the, yeah, over here on the right, you see this? on the right mm -hmm. this, this hides the right. and shows the menu and also options look at that, that so cool. but but yeah like uh you gotta make decisions on on different factors right and and also it's not just like what looks better it's those things but also like what is going to tell the better story mm -hmm. at the end of the day what is going to uh, uh tell people more like in a better way how what how this product works the message and all that so just trying to do the responsive part this is easy yeah it looks like it would look just, well. you're just going to be stacked so it's going to be really easy just trying to see like this one is going to be hard i suppose this one is going to be just like this this image and then sorry just trying to figure it out like how yeah, I think uh, that's how responsive is going to, to look on this one on, on mobile. And this one is going to be really hard mobile. Yeah, that one's a very... Yeah. yeah. You know what? No, it doesn't have to. I think, uh, yeah, this one, let us let me draw it down here. This one could be that once it's uh, collapsed... Oops, sorry. I keep on doing. Maybe when it's collapsed... Hold on, let's look at it again. It turns into a cart. You know? Mm, okay. You know? Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm, then uh, yeah. instead of having to hover to show, like the cart's are already displayed. It's already expanded for you. Yeah. yeah. So this, like when you have a mouse, we show it this way, but when you don't have a mouse, then it collapses into uh, interactive elements because like you cannot depend on hover interactions for, for the web. For, sorry, for mobile. So you have to put it in a way that uh, those interactions that are on hover are available. So there you go. This okay. one, I think it's already on mobile. Like we, this could potentially, like just exactly like that, just a scale down. Totally like that. Yes. Just a grid of six. And then boom, we have it on, on, on the phone. Uh, okay, this one also scales well. I think this one also scales well. This one might be a little bit tricky. This one might actually have to be the face have to has to be cropped. 
if we want to do it. You know, where it's just his little nose peeking over. Yeah. <laughs> just, it's just like this. <laughs> so something like this. Yeah. Yep. Who knows? Maybe he's some big wig in the music industry. Yeah, right. <laughs> the literal big wig. Yeah. <clears throat> Cool. Yeah, I love that you're testing for, or just, you know, going through different ways these could appear in different screens. Like, this is the time. Yeah. I really yeah, yeah. like, I really like how it's looking so far. I, I think it, so how would you go about then, like, telling your story from these? Do you, yeah, how do you go through that? So, so once I, like, okay, these are the different options, then I could potentially, uh, uh, like, create you know, I haven't done this on, like, I would put it on Photoshop and then create a mock-up of the ones that I like the mm. better and just stack them, you know, where it's like, hey, I select this one, I select this one, I select this one, and this one, just as an example, you know, mm -hmm. and then I will put it together on Photoshop, just because of Photoshop, I have the ability to do it quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what? Or, you, or you could bring it into XD. I mean, I think, you know, there's a lot of elements there. I'm wondering, like, how 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 that process would look. Would it be different? Obviously, like, if your Photoshop's comfortable, but um, yeah, I'm interested actually, in this flow. I've never I've never seen it on our streams yet, if that can be. So, possible. okay. So, this will be new to me, too. So, can you... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still learning some stuff on XZ. Can you crop images on XZ? Yes. You can? Ah, <gasps> okay. Then we can totally do it on XE. Should we try it? Let's try it. Okay, so Let's over see. here, you know, if we we do it and fail, whatever. Yeah, exactly. We can uh, totally try it on Photoshop if, if we cannot do it on on XE. So over here on the top, you see that this this button that allows you to publish and export. So you can publish this to different uh, ways. You can even publish it straight to Behance from here. Uh, but you can also just export as. So that's the one uh, I want, and I want to export as a PNG. So I'm just going to export it, and I'm going to put it on my uh, uh, like on my computer. So I have here AirDrop. That's uh, my laptop is next to to my computer, so I can just like uh, put it there. So it's sending. La, 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 la. I will, I just verified uh, it's crop. So, you know, it's more of a mask situation, a mask image uh, situation in terms of crop. So, um, who's that? I don't know if that's a big... <laughs> so we, we can mask and resize your image based on what you want, but a crop in the truest sense of a crop. Are you asking, do you, is that kind of like the biggest uh, piece of your, of your flow and puzzle? Uh, well, just to put things, together let's mm -hmm. uh let me uh i'm going to do yeah. share my, my my computer again okay yeah definitely yeah we and you know what if we also need any questions we have master howard pinsky in the chat if we really need to ask but he also just told me uh we can mask um and we also have sam anderson who's working on xd we have some pretty pretty we have chris cannon in the chat hey guys it's good to see everyone in here uh they're here for us i know they're here to back us up if we have any XD questions. So we're doing this, we're doing it together. So I created a folder here and yes. So I'm like one of those people that tries sometimes to build the Ikea furniture without mm -hmm. looking at the manual. <laughs> so let's try to do that first. Once we get in trouble, we can ask people. Exactly. Uh, but <laughs> I don't think this is the best way to do stuff, by the way, uh, but that's the way I do it. So let me, let me see. Think Let's select one. Oh, uh, let me. Yeah. Okay. Can you, can you see me? Hello. Hello. Oh, hold on. It's I can see him in my Zoom. So can you and I can see his screen. I guess I think it just some technical difficulties. I think uh, Pablo is frozen, but his screen seems to be flowing. It's my hold on. Let me stop and put my video again. Can you see my video? Yeah. There you go. I th I think uh 
I love it. Thank We're you. live. I love when we do stuff live. Uh, yes. Okay. So let's try it out. So hold on. How can I crop stuff? Can I crop? No, no, no. Oh, you know what? It'd be a mask. Yeah. yeah. So, so it'd be like a smaller. Oh, so then I'll have to create like a rectangle. And let's say that we chose this one. Then this one and this one do a mask. Is that how we would do it? Uh, essentially. There yeah, right. There you go. Yep. So then let's say that we, let's, let's, let's make choices. So hold on. People are going to choose one of these. So is there any way for people to vote? The first five people who are in the chat tell us number one, number two, or number three. All right, chat. There's your homework. Let's do it. One, two, two or three in feature. One, two, or three. Okay. You gotta, you gotta choose it. In the meantime, I'm going to choose one for, for the benefits. And I think I like, I like your idea. I like your idea of the Brady Bunch. So just going to create a rectangle on top of it and then mask it with shape, mask with shape. So we have the third section of our design over here. What about what's going on? How are we doing on the on the other okay. one. So it looks like we got three, wait, one, two, three, four, five, okay. three. So we got five, three. So number three it is. Number three it is. Let's use oh, this that's one. A fun one. Yeah. Just like a, you see the different people, different, the different, uh, I don't so, know, yeah. like styles. And it's going so to be like personality characters. in that one. I already feel it. I already know. Yeah. I can already sense it. There you go. So we have, uh, there you go. This, this, this landing page is starting to look good. Look at it. It's pretty so, cool. <laughs> let's just start like uh, putting it together just like that okay let's choose one and you get to choose this one choose one uh, of these three i i love i'm calling him the big wig big I wig big wig he's oh my god in the industry he's in the biz he's uh you know he's like come come listen to music this is how we do music now yeah okay let's do the big wig so let's uh draw a rectangle on top of big wig Mr. or Mrs. Wig. <laughs> and... The wig. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on. What did I do? I think I, think I did You just something. made it a component. I think you just missed. I component. did not intend that. Let's mask with shape. That's what we want. Okay. Okay, cool. So we have wireframe our landing page. Look at that. Oh, it's awesome. It's very cool. Let's uh, just make it a little bit like this. So, okay, I mean, it's not, I mean, the idea is just for it to, to give us an idea of the things that we want to do. We still have the other stuff and something doesn't work out. We can come back and choose one of these, but we have our first sketch of our uh, landing page. That's pretty cool, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're moving, yeah. we're grooving. Tomorrow we're gonna have to design this though. We're gonna have to actually go to high fidelity on this. We're gonna use uh, uh, XD. We're gonna do this. In the meantime, I wanted to show you some illustrations that we might be using tomorrow, but uh, I just wanted to get started like on on some of this stuff. So I was thinking maybe uh, we jump to Illustrator. I have some illustrations that I already made. So, and, and this is a, a, a pack that I put out there for other people if they want to try it. It's called Happy Bunch. Happy Bunch, and, it's, and, and this is actually available on a product called uh, Blush. So this thing, oops, apparently. So if you ever want to try it out, you can download it and use it on your XD files or whatever. I go to blush.design, Happy Bunch, and you can just like play around with the different characters like different compositions. You can download as SBG, so you can use it on your website. You can use it a, a PNG and just like transform it however you want. So all of these things are already created. Look, even like uh, scenes like that. So go to plush.design to play around with this one. And there's one called Happy Bunch. But all of this was actually created on Illustrator. This is how it was made, uh, all the, those illustrations. And actually I made all of those illustrations with like in parts like with components, like uh, like using, uh, well, actually not components, but brushes. Mm, interesting. 
interesting, right? Yeah. So let me show you this pretty cool trick. So you see these illustrations here, right? But if you press Command Y to see the outlines, <laughs> look at what's happening look here. Look at these little, wow. It's just like a, it's just one line. The thing is that I'm actually using a brush. So the brush is coming from this. I created a, like for example, I first, this is actual vector. So this is, these oh, are actually so shapes. You can really move things around. Exactly. The, so, uh, illustration component design. Yeah. So uh, let's say that I, I create the shape of like a straight arm, like the straight arm and also like a straight arm with a different end of the hand, you know, like mm -hmm. a, like grabbing, pointing, and then it turned these into art brushes. And then that way, like, look at how all of them are different. That way I can come over here and just like, seriously, just with a pen tool, just do, uh, oops, sorry. Apparently I was not using the pen tool. Uh, let's, uh, let's change this. I'm going to change, I'm going to go to my brushes over here and I'm going to select one of the ones that I already created. For example, this one that is, says blue T pointing. And look at that. Look at that. Wow. Blue and Pablo, what can you can you tell us a little bit about like why this is why you saw kind of a need for for something like this a more component based illustration guide? Um, yeah, go ahead. Well, well, because so as a designer, as a product designer, interaction designer, whatever you want to call us, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I was learning a lot about like design systems. Like for example, Adobe, using components on Adobe XD, right? Mm -hmm. So using uh, components in Adobe XD, then you start like, hey, how to reuse elements that you're going to be using a lot, you know? And if you're creating characters like this and you want to put them in different, in, in different, like doing different things, for example, this one, hey, like strolling, walking, saying hi, mm -hmm. hey, just like a like a hand, like giving the hand, like saying hi, but with the other hand, like pointing at stuff, all of these things. Mm -hmm. like, uh, well, I will have to draw each one of them, right? Yep. So if if you think about like, hey, how can I approach this in a way that is like with systems, with like components in a way that I, like, that we have learned on the design side and product design, how can we apply this in illustration and just like improve my workflow? That's when I started like playing around with the idea of like, hey, hold on, Illustrator gives you brushes. And with brushes, I can just like play around with these thing. And if I don't, I just draw it once and then play around with it, you know, like, hey, you know what, actually, I want to say that, oh, hold on, sorry about that. I should have pressed V, not A. So I can just duplicate it. And hey, you know what, actually, I want this leg to look like this. So it looks like it's like jumping or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So easy. So cool. So fun. <laughs> so, so, so fun. it feels like I'm <laughs> shading. It feels like, I mean, but you know, it makes sense. These are things that illustrators are, are recreating constantly, you know, from scratch. Why not use some principles of component design and systems design to create? Um, it's so fun looking. Yeah. Uh, it's so fun to move around. I, I also love how, you you know you can really it helps you how it tells a story like so you're not kind of stuck in moving things around awkwardly you can actually tell a true almost like scene by scene story and we were just talking earlier about how much uh, illustrations help that um, here you can actually get it down to even the slightest hand gesture up um, it's very cool it's very handy and very easy to understand especially for non uh, non uh, illustrating designers um, yeah yeah mm -hmm. you just like a uh, you get started quickly and then uh once you once you like hey i like that I, I, I like that shirt i like that that style okay cool now let's do all the poses and do them quickly and that way you you get to focus on other things that are just maybe more important or just as important right. but like now you have the time to do that stuff too. Yeah. Or say it's someone in marketing changes copy or, you know, maybe something is different and you can go back in, take that exact same illustration that everybody loves and fell in love with on the, that's on the landing page. And actually we need her to be sitting instead of jumping 
I wish we could keep that, you know, how simple to just go back into a library like this and just change it up really quickly. Yeah. Keep the style the same. Very cool. Very cool stuff. Um, so yeah. how, so how in your process would you um, kind of Let's select go. through these, through these, uh, or through a library like this? Yeah. Um, Should we create one? But uh, let's actually, let's create this one. Let's turn it. Let's go over here. I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to use one of these as a template, but let's create a different arm, a different style of arm and maybe a different style of pants, pants. I'm going to use this <laughs> as a template. I already made it, but maybe we do something else. Maybe this one is going to be like shorts. Maybe, so I'm going to go over here. These are actually just like basic shapes. I'm going to make them a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to make this. So these are like long shorts. There you go. And let's say that the person has boots. So I'm going to remove this. I'm going to remove these points. Obviously, other people will have to like draw them from scratch. But if you see, I'm only using rectangles, like really basic shapes. Mm -hmm. Like just like the most basic shapes and just like I try to replicate here and there. And boom. And then let's remove this. Let's remove this. And let's just put it here. Now we have, oh, sorry. With, uh, uh, I'm just using like pressing different uh, keyboard shortcuts. I'm, I, I don't know. I've, I've gotten mm -hmm. used to, to using keyboard shortcuts. So that's why I get, I stay quiet because I'm, <laughs> Oh, I mean, I I, yeah. I mean, once you're once you got the shortcuts, it's impossible. It's um, it, it just like zooming in real life, right? Like it becomes just a part of you. So yeah. So, <laughs> so like for example, there I press Shift C, and that way it allows me to to do this kind of thing. And then there you go. Now it has like a looks like cowboy boots. I don't know. You know. Yeah. Look at this. These are dope boots. So we have or new character maybe it, with the boots it shouldn't have <laughs> socks so no socks uh maybe oh, yeah. we add this, uh, this, this person's definitely in a band <laughs> yeah let's add a line Ooh, what is that it's it, it kept the brush that i used before so uh let's remove that brush and select just a basic three point round there you go now this is a cool it's a cool Boot. Let's change the color of this to maybe a, like a light bluish like that. There you go. Electro, electric boots. Mm, mm -hmm. There you the go. Bowie and all of us. Yes. Yes. And uh, come on, if we're going to go like that, those shorts need to be a little bit shorter. <laughs> come on. Little, little. There you go. Around there. So there you go. We have a uh, or new leg. Uh, you could have just created this just like with basic shapes as we learn. Uh, but just for time's sake, we're just like using this as a template. Now let's make it like long sleeve. So because this person gets really cold on top, but it's down to, yeah, it's just the shorts. It's getting the person a little bit too cold. And that's why mm -hmm. they, they need long sleeves on top, on the upper body. <laughs> it's so, a look. It's a look, Pablo. It's a look. Exactly. It's part of the look. Yeah. Oh, yes. So there you go. The now, yes. We have that, we have this. Now let's turn this into a brush and then apply it here, okay? Ooh. You ready for that? Mm -hmm. So this is this is the trick, my friends. This is what you've been waiting for. Drum roll. So uh, we open the brush panel over here, brushes. All of these are brushes that are already created, but usually you have uh, some default brushes there. You wanna go to the menu and say new brush with the stuff that is selected. The stuff that you want to turn into a brush, you have it selected and then you say new brush. And then here on this menu, you want to say art brush. That's what you wanna create. Yeah, there are other brushes that are cool, but for this kind of effect, we want an art brush. And now you have more options. First of all, let's give it a name. So we call it electric boots, right? Electric boots. You give it a name and then you have these options. These options are pretty important when you're creating this. So you want, uh, you can say scale proportionally. That way it would just like stretch. Well, like a scale, like the whole thing without stretching, you know, like mm -hmm. like your brush, it might have different lengths, right? It can be short, it can be long. So this will like scale the content, the art. 
stretch will actually stretch it along the line, along your uh, your the, the length of your brush. What you want is this one, a stretch, but between the guides. So you want the boot to always remain the same size. And you mm -hmm. want the shorts to always remain the size. What you want to stretch is this part, the leg, right? That's the part where you want to stretch. So you want to stretch between the guides. So now let's put the guide on the top. That way your short is always the same size. Mm. See, I moved it here. This guide is here now. Now let's put it here. Let's actually write it down, maybe 300. Oh my God. <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Where's electric shoot? Yeah. Where where did it go? I think uh, oh, it's here. Electric boots, they're here. So now I'm going to just like a, a, a draw a line. And then I'm going to use electric boots. There you go. Look, Look at that. that. Electric boots. Let's uh let's actually edit it. That's a cool thing too. You can just like double click on it and then come back and edit some of it. So you know what actually it should have been maybe uh, 400. I think I pressed enter and that's why it closed. Yeah, yeah around 400, maybe four, 420. Yeah, okay. around there. Good there nothing. you go. Now, uh, so another thing that is important, this uh, automatically Illustrator selected this for me. It kind of detected that the direction was from top to bottom. And then you select it here. You know, it can be sometimes it's left to right, uh, right to left, or like this. You know, so you, this direction is really important. And then also you can flip along stuff. So you say, okay. And then here, do you want to apply to the strokes? And you say, yes, apply to the strokes. And that way, whatever stroke you had that already had that brush, those changes will be applied. So there you go. So now, now we can go over here and actually change this object that we had. So hold on, let me actually duplicate it so we can see the before and after. I'm going to duplicate. This is what one we created first. Now let's go over here and let's go to change this to electric boots. There you go. Now the same character has electric boots selected. Mm -hmm. Now let's turn this one also into, into a brush and that way it will have uh, this thing but you know what let's use this same color that way it the torso the torso is actually a shape it's not a brush by the way mm -hmm. so let's uh let me just uh select this color it's already selected here oh it's this color that is a global color so let me just use that one so over here i'm going to use that global color boom so now we have this these shapes i'm going to just as before, I'm going to go new brush. Let's call it, this has to be an art brush. Let's call it, uh, well, just new arm. Okay. And then there's a stretch between the guides. And then this one, I only want it to not stretch here. This mm. rounded part, yep. I want to keep it. But I do want to stretch all of this. So I'm going to just like move this around there. And then the hand. I don't want the hand to stretch. So maybe where the sleeve ends, that's where it should stop stretching. There you go. Bow, bow, bow. Direction is good. Everything is good. Everything is looking fine. So now we have another one. And now know. let's select these arms okay. and let's see if it works. Sometimes you have to do some, oh, apparently I didn't name it. Oh, look at that. All right. Let's go over here. And yeah, apparently I didn't, uh, didn't change the name here. Let's go here, new arm. Didn't detect the name. Look at that. What a vibe. What a cool vibe. How cool is that? And then if, if now, obviously, let's, uh, this is like, I don't want to lose this because yeah. if, if I want to, no, you know what? I want to change it. Well, you can change it easily, just like create a new brush. But now I can just like, hey, actually, you know what? I, I want them to, to look like their arm is like this. I don't know. You can just mm -hmm. like keep playing mm -hmm. around with stuff, you know? I that's that's the beauty of this that you can easily do this. Look so and also I, I mean right now they look a little bit robotic. So you can do some rotating of the head and stuff. So like play around with all that stuff. At least you have a great starting point, you know? Like once you're like, hey, you know what? Actually this rounded little piece, I don't like that. Okay. 
you can just go ahead and say, hey, uh, uh, where, where's, 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 hold on, it's over here. Object and expand, expand appearance. And now it's not a brush anymore. Mm. So now you can come in here and, and further really edit this. The nitty gritty of it, look yeah. at that. And it's all available to online for anybody to use. So oh, that's like, pretty cool. That's well, I mean, this is, seems like it's, it, you know, for anybody who is a little bit too nervous to kind of get in there and wants to create something, try it out, see how like you can tell a story. I know, I think this would be, this would be something great for even something like um, uh, just a, a basic walkthrough, you know, maybe you don't even use them on your on your landing page, maybe you're using them to kind of explain, or just tell a quick story, get some buy in on an idea. Um, in a fun, engaging way that's kind of, you know, doesn't have to be tied in with your even brand identity. You can just try these out. Yeah. So, um, uh, someone said, someone in the chat said it feels like, uh, it reminds me of, Julia said it reminds me of those paper dolls from the 90s where you can clip different clothes onto them. Oh, yeah. See, remember those? It does oh, yeah. look like that. <laughs> and uh, one thing uh, that I didn't mention, once I expanded, let me go back. So this brush, let me command Y. It's just a brush, right? Mm -hmm. Then I went to expand, expand appearance. Boom! Now it's uh, now there are shapes, but there's a lot of nodes, right? Yeah, a yeah. lot of points. Well, the cool thing is that on Illustrator, just right click, simplify, Boom. and then with just a slider, look at all the nodes that went away, all the vectors. Okay. If you want to simplify it a little bit more, you can simplify it a little bit more. Just be sure that everything is looking good. Sometimes you 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 don't want to go too far into the simplification. But yeah, there you go. Now I can come awesome. in here and edit a little bit more. You know, it's just like, hey, you know what? Actually, let's add a point here and let's make it look like it's coming all the way from here. So, so the curve looks a little bit smoother. There you go. That's awesome. So, so yeah, that's uh, using this tomorrow. Are, are all the other are other packs on Blush um, set up in a similar way as, or is this very much just your, the way you do your illustrations? Like are other artists doing this type of component? Uh, work? Oh, let me show you another one. And you're going to, to see it as like, oh yes, I can totally see it that way. Uh, this one, which was made by uh, Brandon Mendoza. Mm -hmm. It's pretty similar. You see how? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh yeah. This person also used brushes like that. So for these, uh, this type of like, and, and intentionally it was like a boxy illustration, just like a very minimal simplified uh, illustration. So for that, like the brushes came out perfectly, you know, look at that. So all of those, all of those legs, everything there, those were made with brushes too. And I, I know Brandon and, and, and I gave Brandon that tip and he used that tip That's and then he, cool. he, he later showed, showed it to me. Uh, awesome. I see a lot of people in the chat saying they want they, they, they love this and they didn't never knew they never knew certain things so maybe people had seen this pack before and didn't maybe fully understand how all the different ways it could work yeah um, this is pretty cool another thing that I that I did is uh, for example see that I did two types of legs mm. it's the same one but this one is a little bit darker yeah yeah that way uh, if for example let's say that I, I apply let's apply uh, let's duplicate this one. Ching, 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 ching. Just to demo, why, why are there two, Pablo? What, what is going on? Well, sometimes you want to, uh, for, to make it look like there's a depth. Uh, let's do, ba, 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 ba. let's do blue. Oh my God. Dark pants. Let's use dark pants. Oh no. Where, where are all our pants? Are there all other pants that you see here? Uh, 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 uh. Well, I can just, you know what? I have it in a different file. Bunch parts. Oh yeah, I did one with an astronaut too. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here, here's the idea. Mm -hmm. the, uh, one of the brushes kind of is staggered. Mm -hmm. red short, shorts back. Mm. That way uh, it's a little bit darker and just like gives a little bit of depth. So that's why I was, uh, there were two, uh, of those this one should be red shorts there you go very cool so that gives a gives a little bit of that but it's the same idea so just a tip there too if you want to make it look like there's like the other legs and is behind and you're using basic 
like blocky shapes that will help that will help a love lot. it i love it yeah very cool oh. Very cool. Very cool. Anybody okay. who's uh, anyone who's just jo joining, because we you could have just joined right now, for all we know. Um, we are going through the awesome pack uh, with Pablo of uh, that you can find on on Blush, uh, and really just kind of create your own doll. Essentially, this reminds me of, like playing with dolls, which is pretty fun. Um, your own like actual like uh, illustration without really having to. Do too much buy-in. Try and you can try. It's just just like we were wireframing before. You can actually wireframe your look and feel of an illustration. Um, and I love this. And we're doing this currently because a lot of the a, a lot of the wireframes that we created earlier have illustrations on them. And you know, if you know Pablo Stanley, you you associate that name with a lot of illustrations. So we're doing it. And I'm really excited to see how how cool these illustrations are going to look tomorrow. Yeah, um, me too. So uh, cool, so cool. Especially with the, the, you know, the punk. You're, I see you're doing like a punk rock looking guy. It's just gonna work really well. Yeah. That's cool. So uh, I'm just like adding uh, a new hairstyle to this. Uh, but that's something that I also do like in kind of like components, mm -hmm. where it's like, hey, I drew a basic head shape and then uh, multiple hairstyles that will, can go with that shape and also even expressions you know like hey do you want the person to be like happy worried uh, a little bit mad mm -hmm. a little bit like like a solemn like a just like do one and then start doing the rest but uh yeah. so now we added one to the stack of options like a punk rocker that we're going to be using tomorrow uh that but yeah and cool. And just as another reminder, like uh, the other stuff that we did and what we're going to be doing tomorrow, mm -hmm. uh, like we're going to be using these illustrations uh, tomorrow. Like I'm, I'm going to potentially have some of the illustrations already done uh, and we're going to be using them on XD where uh, today we we use Fresco to use the, to do the wireframe of a landing page. Well, sorry, the, the sketching, not even wireframe. Mm -hmm. sketching of like the different sections of this uh, uh, of this landing page. We had all of these already written. It was just like copy, you know, like, hey, mm -hmm. this is a hero. This is a feature, another feature, benefit section, and then a call to action. And then we like, OK, how are they going to look? How are they going to be laid out? We try different things for the hero, different things for the feature section, another, the different things for the benefits and, like, and so on. Once we tried the different things, we got to choose one of those and it's like okay later let's actually design some of them and actually next day and that's what we're going to be doing tomorrow we're going to be designing these little guys and that's uh i don't know i'm excited about that part now we're going to tomorrow like turn this into high fidelity using xd and maybe add some interactions maybe this one is going to be fun to do some interactions on hover effects from a different states and stuff i think so i think it's going to be real cool Really, really cool. Uh, and well, you know, we we still have a. We can even come back after after we check out, we check out our community's uh, artist spotlight. Something a little bit new we're going to be doing pretty soon. Um, but before we even jump into that, it's something I really wanted to talk about. Uh, the we have actually have this really cool creative residency uh, way to support their creative community with X, with uh, Adobe. Um, basically, it's called the Adobe Creative Res Residency Community Fund. And it's something new. The, the actual team has put together a million dollar community fund at providing resources for different creatives who have been affected negatively throughout this uh, the COVID times. Uh, the project will run entire, the entirety of 2020. So there's no rush to apply. And uh, those selected will receive a one-time grant to pursue a two to four week project. And so moderators, if you could attach uh, the link. Um, so if anybody, you know, this is a community still and uh, we want to help bring other people bring people up and it's just something we uh if you know anyone who's fallen on a harder time and you know as creatives we got to stick together um just make sure to send them that link um so that's pretty cool uh we gotta keep that to stay together how how are how are you you've done a lot of work in the community of pablo um and the creative community itself you know do you see a lot of or a lot of people um uh, a lot of people are struggling what are some ways uh, beyond uh, beyond what you're doing already that you think uh, people can uh, people can help with? 
Yeah, I feel like you're, I feel like you've done a lot of work actually in the community and helping bring people up. Uh, yeah. you speak to a couple of those communities or shout some out really quick before we move on. Um, yeah, I think, uh, well, uh, I was saying the Behance community, just like uh, there's a lot of people there just like uh, supporting each other and the work that they put out there. But uh, I suppose like if you want to help, um, we have a we have a community for anyone who identifies as Latino or Latina. There's a, we have a community called Latin X Who Design. So you can just like Google that and 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 go there if you identify like that. But also, I think uh, just like on on Twitter, there's a lot of people. If you are looking for a mentor, if you're looking for someone. It just like guides you. I think there's a lot of uh, uh, designers out there who are willing to help out uh, the people who are starting too. So I would say like, hey, try to reach out. Don't don't be uh, be conscious of the other person's time. So just like send a message and be uh, tell them why you think they will be a good mentor or maybe why they can help you with something, uh, and just like keep it short keep it like with an intention that is not just like too broad but it's like hey i have this specific problem and i think that you specifically could help me with that problem uh or just like figure out this thing that i'm still trying to figure out uh you because of this you know i think that sending a message like that to someone that that is out there that has a who's a designer who or something that like a more in, in a more senior level i think yeah. usually people respond well to that uh, yeah. but but yeah try to be like like conscious of the time and that way like be direct about the kind of feedback you're looking for the kind of advice that you're looking for and not be too don't be too broad and also the message you send be brief too right. just like yeah because uh uh yeah you again you want to be uh considerate of all of people's time absolutely so, yeah, and I, and I think uh, the, the design community is pretty pretty open and pretty, like, there's a lot of cool people. So I, I would say, like, don't don't be afraid to reach out. And and I don't know, like, it's also a numbers game, I guess. So yeah. reach out to a lot of people and one of them might actually respond. So, like, if you're just a beginner and you're trying to learn from someone that you admire, reach out and, and you, you might be surprised. I think that's a really, I think those are really great points to, to bring up when, when, for any designer kind of watching who is either, you know, help falling, falling on harder times creatively, trying to figure things out for yourself in your own projects. I think, I think Pablo's advice around how to reach out is, I think it's great taking, making sure you're aware of their time, but also being succinct and also being intentional. So, um, you know, so anybody's watching who maybe knows somebody who, who or maybe it's yourself who could who could definitely benefit from a, a creative residency and a little more funding to their own personal projects. This is great. This is great for you. Um, another shout out, uh, Lennox who design anybody associates with that. I am actually I'm actually on this. I am I'm half Mexican and I so I associate with that community. Um, another, so, so then now we're going to jump in back into our Behance community and Adobe live community. We're doing something new on Mondays and what, basically what it is, is we're going to be spotlighting a member, um, and kind of checking out their Behance, looking through it, um, with our guests, um, giving, you know, giving some kudos, giving some, some words of wisdom that we have. Yeah. Um, so kind of like a portfolio review, but maybe a little like more, this is your Behance review. So. So Sarah is our community member today. Hello, Sarah. I hope you're watching. If not, you can replay this. It's all good. Um, we're going to check her out. So right off the bat, you know, I like to kind of just take a look at what your Behance profile kind of is currently and looks like. Uh, it looks like you're a junior graphic designer and you have a good amount of project views. And I'm really liking what you, you have a lot of work on here. So this is awesome. This is great. Anything right off the bat, um, Pablo, definitely like throw in anything. If you have anything, um, to say, I would like to point, I'd love, I love looking at kind of the Behance profile overall to kind of just give any words like, um, like it'd be great to know where you've worked. If you're currently working, um, you know, maybe there's a portfolio that lives somewhere else on, you know, maybe not just Behance, um, any, any contact information. I feel like there's definitely, you could fill out a little bit more, Sarah. Um, and, and kind of that's my that's my spiel. I kind of like to just check that out. Um, is there anything 
Pablo, you would like to know from her that maybe she's not showing in her Behance portfolio. Yeah, um, I, I, I agree with what you're saying. I think uh, it's, you want to, if someone likes your work, like, don't lose the opportunity for them to reach out to you. Mm -hmm. So like, uh, like share how they can contact you. I'm having trouble being able to see this in, in, oh, in a bigger okay. screen because right, I'm sharing nice. my screen. Mm -hmm. So, but what I can see, because I, I see it in a, in... oh, no sharing of the screen anymore. Okay, cool. There you go. Thank you. Nice. Okay. So, so, okay. So this looks pretty cool. I, I love that uh, a lot of the stuff looks like the, the house presented, like in, mm -hmm. like in something that looks like real paper, like a real magazine. Mm -hmm. uh, that like a hey, like around apparently with water around <laughs> that's pretty cool that one i i think uh i yeah i don't know let's let's click on one of yeah, these yeah let's dig, let's dive into that one yeah so sarah just kind of like some words around what pablo's saying he was you know don't basically make sure you're able to get people to con maybe make sure people can contact you <laughs> and yeah. so if you're super on behance all the time perfect because you can contact through a message but maybe you have an email that maybe you check more often put that up there as well cool okay let's jump into the the resorts magazine that's cool look at that very cool so okay. so this is like what what is this is this like a poster is it like a it's like a Maybe like it's a like a booklet? magazine cover. Looks like a magazine cover, I think. So. Oh, heaven in a. Uh, okay, I would say like, hey, check your uh, your or Even, talk, mm -hmm. your heaven. It's missing an e. That's a small mm -hmm. thing, but yeah, I love the the use of the the texture and the water and the photo. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and also the I like the the one on the the book with the shell. That looks pretty yeah. powerful. It does powerful. It's totally, it's totally a vibe. Like you can sense what you're trying to create here. Definitely, you know, co we, like we talked at the front of the stream that today, just copy is a very important thing. Make sure other people look at it. I guess that's the best feedback with copy. Um, write it out beforehand somewhere else. Uh, <laughs> not just straight on the, on the, on what you're designing. Um, I think, I think what I really love when I'm looking at a Behance uh, case study is why you've made it and how you've made it and who you've made it for. Maybe not all of those things, but at least one of those things. Maybe it was a quick project you just decided to do on the fly and on the cuff. That's cool too. But kind of kind of walking through that. Um, love that you gave photography credit. That's awesome. So you definitely have you definitely have great momentum behind behind what you're creating. There's just kind of these little things um, like telling your story. So why don't we check out a couple other projects and see if maybe she's applied that in other spaces. Um, Let's see. Let's go to let's go to the spa. I'm also like loving the fact that like everything is super like zen and spa like and almost risque with that photo. But uh, <laughs> let's check it out. Okay, nice. so we have a, okay, cool, cool. It's like a landing page, mm -hmm. right? You have some uh, price tables, some logos. Uh, suppose, hmm. Oh, cool. Oh, wow. And so we even have more down here. Cool. All right. Okay. Very cool. Okay. Let's go back up. All right. Let's go to the top. Yeah. So we have different typefaces being used. Can you, uh, mm -hmm. I think, uh, I like that the use of the, the one that says massage services, like mm -hmm. that, that serif, it, it looks good and it contrasts really well with this. Uh, with the sans serif on the the CTA, yeah. I I'm, I'm not sure about the one that says we provide your happiness, but um, I, maybe uh, I just need to understand a little bit more on that decision. Uh, but I really love the one the massage services that 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 combination that, that works very well, and yeah. it seems to be the way you've structured throughout as well. Yeah. I almost feel like yeah, this is a little more of a creative creative thought. Um, yeah. Let's see. Let's keep going. Yeah. Our services, facial care. Okay. Cool. Cool. cool Different cool. things. I want to go to this place. I want to relax. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> All 
All right. So, yeah, so you've kind of, you know, you, you, you've structured pretty well, you know, and now we're kind of bought in. We, we we're learning maybe and now you're showing us different packages we can buy. That's pretty cool. Fairly affordable. <laughs> um, that's the other thing, you know, I do feel like you're using actual information. Your information is actual information. That's helpful to, to have buy in on your on your mock up here um, versus throwing an alarm Ipsum. So I got to say thank you for writing out copy, copy, co like realistic copy realistic prices um and i love i love this idea down here of kind of showing maybe these are other other spaces that your your spa is included in um yeah and thanks for even like putting in a little bit of like the typeface so i guess that one is dancing script there you we go really get okay yeah i almost yeah. feel like this carla sands could be like is that your logo because that's that's very you know, on point and vibe with what you're creating Hold on, what's, where was Carla Sands used? I don't, I don't know. Is that what uh, Maybe it they is used the, on the... It's the logo. Oh, I see. Uh -huh. and, and then what is that menu? What is that typeface? What is that using? Is that also the same? It doesn't look Probably like it's the same. same. It, just look, it looks maybe similar to the CTA, but maybe just spaced different to the... Let's see. Oh, maybe we didn't include it. So that's one thing to, you know, kind of go back and include if you want to do one of these, um, these here's, here's everything I've used, include everything you've used. Um, but cool, cool, cool. So it's a, you know, so you range from, you have a lot of really great, you're a graphic designer, it says. So you're playing with some web and you're doing some cool landing page designs. Um, a good thing to do, yeah, to model, model them after some, some other, uh, maybe UX design portfolios. Um, there's a lot that goes into making these decisions. Um, and we'd like to know, we'd like to know why. Let's see. Yeah, there's a good range of the like work type in this, in your Behance. I like that, and, and, and they're very different. Um, I'm interested in this, this page right here. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Fashion. Studio Clarina. Hmm, look at that, okay. Just like a... It's like saying like goodbye grits. I'm doing my thing. I'm gonna put, or, or I mean, it's it's using a grid, I suppose. Yeah, yeah. It's like, but it's my own grid. Yeah, it's like <laughs> it, it, usually like uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm 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 a little bit boring whenever I assign something. I always go with a really simple like boring layout. Mm. So I love seeing stuff like this that is a little bit more out there like yeah. studio clarina fa fashion week that like how the typeface has was put together this way yeah. i would have been like no 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 align to the <laughs> left everything needs to be aligned to the left right, that would have yeah. been me uh but now that i see it as like okay yeah i can see it's, it's actually not too bad you know it's it's, it's actually kind of cool but i would have never done that because i'm a boring person right. so i love seeing people that try different things also yeah. like that that element below with the zero one, like I suppose, yeah. like a page or something. Is mm -hmm. that a, like a book or is, I don't know? I'm I'm intrigued. I want to click on stuff. Yes, it's very high fashion. It's very, it's very hip to now to be breaking these certain rules. And I mean, like any art, like any type of art, it's good to do that. Um, and I like it. And I like your use of your imagery and on this page works really well for what you're what you're kind of trying to explain. And it's okay to it's okay to do things differently. So I, I personally think this one is one of your stronger works. I think you have a different a different eye like that. And um, awesome, great work. Um, how do you feel about people calling themselves junior, Pablo? Just generally. Uh, I mean, uh, I think, uh, well, to, uh, it, it looks like Sara is. Because I think, you. I mean, as a junior, I was told long ago, like, Juniors, we're, we're all junior, you know, we, we know. I think, Sarah, you have a lot of work on here. Um, if you, maybe you're working, maybe some of these are clients you actually paid. Maybe they're just some fun ones you've done. Maybe you can throw in just take up the junior um, just for your own self. And because you're you're always leveling up, we're always leveling up. Um, gotcha. So you're saying yeah. like, hey, junior might uh, maybe, uh, might be a bad thing for Sarah because of the, yeah, she. I would say she's got some great work on here, and uh, you know, even if she does feel like a junior, this is a thing. A lot of people, you know, you feel you're. It's a it's a hard space to break into, even though you feel it. You know, writing it, 
it kind of puts you into that box, just go, go straight for graphic designer. And who knows, maybe you'll, maybe you'll start feeling a lot more empowered to, to be graphic and not just junior. So, um, awesome. I think, I think we have a lot of great work on here and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing kind of how you progress. Um, I'm loving your mock-ups though. We love your mock-ups. So keep going with the mock-ups. Um, cool. Okay. So uh, that was Sarah. And if, again, this is a Monday thing for uh, the chat. If you guys know anybody in the community who would love to be spotlighted, there is a tab right above us and go check it out. The other thing that I kind of want to leave us with is, um, is, um, is just kind of remembering that a lot of this, uh, a lot of these tutorials, a lot of things that we've discussed are available online. We haven't really touched upon XD, we'll do tomorrow. If anyone's new to XD and have just stumbled upon the screen, uh, our, our actual stream, check out uh, letsxd.com to for any tips and you can follow along tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be awesome. We're gonna be hanging out with Pablo again. I'm stoked. We did some really great doodling today. I'm hoping you're gonna give yourself a doodle break, Pablo, for tomorrow until tomorrow, or maybe that's just how you live and breathe. I'm not sure. But um, this has been really awesome. I can't wait. And uh, we'll see you all tomorrow here on the stream. Thank you so much, Alexis. This was super fun. Yeah. And thanks everyone who was watching. Let's see you tomorrow. We'll see you guys later. Thank you.